At this point, you've heard a lot about my journey as a virtual assistant, (laughs) and I think it's time to start sharing more of your voices and stories. Every VA's journey looks a little bit different. So today I invited three virtual assistants to share the story of where their journey began. You're going to hear from Jessica, Mari, and Tiffany about how they landed their very first clients. Each story is completely different and you'll learn so much from each of them. I'm so excited. Let's jump in. You're listening to the Support Squad Podcast, where virtual assistants come together to share their best business tools and tips. Virtual assistant for life coaches Sharon Nissen created the Support Squad with a firm belief in community over competition. Whether you're a new virtual assistant looking for advice on how to get started or an established virtual assistant looking to expand your skills and invite even more abundance into your career, you're in the right place. Working from home doesn't have to be lonely. We're in this together. Now, here she is, the host of the Support Squad podcast, Sharon Nissen. Hi, I seriously could not be more excited about today's episode. When I put out the request for stories on Instagram and in our Facebook group, I was overwhelmed at the response. It's been so powerful and inspiring to me to listen to other virtual assistants tell the story of how they got their start. I love how different each story is and how many lessons can be learned from each one. First up, we have Jessica Skelton. Jessica is a soon-to-be wife and a mother to a one-and-a-half-year-old son and a seven-year-old puppy. She lives with her family in Missouri, where the weather has daily mood swings and they like their raviolis deep-fried. Yum, sign me up. (laughs) Jessica took her first steps toward becoming a virtual assistant in November 2018, and she got serious about finding clients in January 2019. Her focus as a VA is on web design, Pinterest management, and email marketing, and she's passionate about serving others and allowing her clients to crush their business goals while maintaining balance in all other areas of their lives. I want you to hear her story because her first client found her in a Facebook group where she knew that her ideal client would be hanging out. And the part that I really want you to notice is that her client found her in the comment section on someone else's post and reached out because her personality shined through. But I'll let Jessica tell you the story in her own words. Hi, my name is Jessica, and I'm here to talk about how I landed my first client as a virtual assistant. Um, My first client reached out to me. Um, It's kind of interesting because the way I was trained as a VA was um, part of the the main networking was to add value to post on Facebook page and different different, um, Facebook groups that your ideal client would be in. Um, so if my ideal client was a, um, a mom business owner, um, then I would go to the groups where that kind of person would hang out in and network there. Um, I had apparently, and I, I don't even know who the person was or what it was about, but I had apparently commented on a post, um, pitching myself, as a VA. They were obviously looking for a VA. Um, and my very first client was not that person. Um, she, whenever we got on our call, she said that she knew that she needed a VA, but hadn't really felt comfortable reaching out. Um, she didn't want to be bombarded with all of the direct messages and emails and all that, that went along with posting something like that on such a large Facebook group. Um, so she took advantage of that person's post. Um, we happened to be kind of in the same, the right place at the right time. And, um, she scrolled through all the comments and she said that mine stuck out to her because of the amount of personality that I put into my pitch. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't just saying I'm interested or me, or, you know, I was pitching myself as a VA and as a person. Um, and she was really drawn to my personality. So that's why she ended up scheduling a call with me and ultimately hiring me. Um, it were about four months into, um, our business relationship and she is my biggest client now. And, 
um, yeah, it's really awesome. And I'm so happy that worked out. Thank you, Jessica, so much for sharing your story and keep rocking your business. So if you guys want to connect with Jessica, you can find her on her website. It's jessicaskeltonva.com or on Instagram at at jessicaskeltonva. And you guys can always go to thesupportsquad.com to find these links in the show notes for the episodes. All right. Our next story comes from Tiffany Lewis. Tiffany is the owner of Propel Virtual Solutions. She helps female entrepreneurs optimize their workflow through administration, social media management, email marketing, and design. And she knows that when busy busy entrepreneurs preserve time and organize systems, their businesses will thrive. So true. With a background in communications, PR, and education, Tiffany understands the value of being a strategic partner and making the client's dreams a reality. She's managed successful social media accounts on multiple platforms and has created efficient business systems that increase productivity. If that's not enough, Tiffany also holds a BA in communications and public relations from Xavier University of Louisiana and an MA in education from American University. She's originally from Atlanta, Georgia, and she currently resides in Maryland with her husband and three children. Here's her story. I started my VA business, Propel Virtual Solutions, in June of 2018. I had my first discovery call and signed contract in September. I received my first payment in October. The process of landing my first client was slow to start, but most definitely worth the wait. My very first client was a referral from my best friend of 30 years. She was totally upselling my business to some friends at a dinner party, and one of those friends became my first client. I'm 100% sure she hired me because of pure association and because my BFF highlighted my boss's skills and reliability. I learned so much in that moment of first, mostly related to setting boundaries and having clear systems for things like office hours, forms of client communication. For example, is it okay to text? If so, what times of day? And for contract upgrades, basically when the client needed me to do more than what was previously agreed upon. If I could start over knowing what I know now, I would have created an SOP or standard operating procedure for myself and my business expectations and practices. My advice to new BVAs is one, keep grinding. Things don't have to be perfect to start. Two, take notes. Reflection and flexibility are the keys to building your dream business. And three, it just takes one yes to get the green light on forever. Good luck. You've got this. Wasn't that amazing? What I love about Tiffany's story is that her first client came from a personal connection. It's a great reminder that when you're starting your business, you should talk to your friends and family about what you're doing. I mean, Tiffany's friend ended up selling her services for her at a dinner party. You never know how far your reach might go just with a simple conversation. So don't be shy about sharing your business with everyone you know. So make sure to connect with Tiffany. You can find her on Instagram at at propel underscore virtual underscore solutions or on Facebook at propel virtual solutions. And I have a couple other links for you that you can find in the show notes for this episode on the support squad.com. All right, so our last story for today comes from Mari Nieves. She is a native of Puerto Rico, a proud Latina VA, but she currently lives in the beautiful state of Wisconsin with her wonderful hubby of 21 years and their teenage son and daughter. They love going on road trips and riding the country trails in their side-by-side ATV. How fun does that sound? 
They lo- she loves getting to know business owners, establishing a relationship, and helping them take care of and grow their business. She has over 15 years in administrative roles, and her goal is to become the go-to gal for those unfinished, unwanted admin tasks that business owners need to be taken care of and just don't have the time to get done. You're going to love hearing about how she stepped outside of her comfort zone and approached a business owner that was already in her personal network. Here's her story. Hola, my name is Mari Nieves. I have been a full-time VA for the past six months. I found my first client at the kitchen of our church. This was back in March of 2018. I was taking a virtual assistant course, and as an action step, I was to reach out to someone in my network who I knew was a business owner and ask for a few minutes of their time to find out if they or someone they knew needed help with administrative tasks. After explaining to him what a virtual assistant is and does, he said that he needed the help and that I was hired. I was super excited. I was hesitant at first and didn't know what to expect, but by deciding and being brave and asking, even when it felt scary, it landed me my first client. I think he hired me because I reached out, explained to him what I did, and he did need the help. I was afraid and shaking while I was asking, but I figured that if he didn't need the help, at least he would know someone that I can reach out to next. If I could do something differently, it would be to have an onboarding process for my clients, at least a sheet with a couple of questions and a password sharing tool to make the delegating process a smooth one. I would also start with the top three tasks learn and finish them before I move on to the next couple of tasks so that I don't overwhelm myself. I give myself a lot of grace and not have the mindset that I should know everything right away. Some of the things you will do as a VA will be new to you. Be honest with your client and they will be understanding. Another thing I do differently is not be so hard on myself, especially when things don't go right the first time around. I'd like to tell new and -and up-and-coming VAs to never give up. If you know that this is what you want to do, actively pursue it. There is definitely room for all of us. Don't be in competition. Be a collaborator. Learn from those that have gone before you and teach those that are coming behind you. And when fear sets in, reach out to others and you will find out that everyone goes through some type of fear at one point or another. Just don't let the fear paralyze you. Show up and be consistent. I know that you want to hide behind your profile pic. I still wrestle with that one. But when you do show up, don't try to be someone else. Just be yourself. And remember, you will fail at some things, but you will do really great at others. And when you get those awesome testimonials from the clients, you'll know that all the sacrifices you have made and will make are worth it. Thank you so much for sharing your story, Mari. It's a great reminder that sometimes the best networking happens offline in the most simple of places. And to all of you VAs out there still looking for your first client, I hope that you found some inspiration in all of the stories that were shared today. And guess what? This episode is going to be a two-parter. I'll be sharing more stories like these in next week's episode. So if you have a story to share or you're looking for support as you're building your virtual assistant business, make sure to join us in the Support Squad Hangout on Facebook. You'll find a talented group of business owners ready to lend an ear. I'll see you there. Until next time, boss babe.